What's up everybody, my name's Thomas, and today we have a fun video going over my favorite B-Rock codec that I always shoot on. So I've owned this Pocket 6K for about a year now, and for a while I was really only shooting ProRes on it because, well, ProRes is still really good. But lately, for the past maybe like five months, I've been shooting primarily B-Raw, and I'm really impressed with it. The B-Raw codec is just insane. You get 12-bit RAW out of it instead of 10-bit ProRes, which 10-bit ProRes is still good. We know that. I'll cover that in a different video. But B-Raw, you get just so much latitude out of it. But yeah, the ProRes that I was shooting on for a while, it's way better than the 8-bit 420 footage that I was working with out of my Sony a6500. Infinitely better. It just looks gorgeous. The 4K ProRes, 1080 ProRes, all those options were killer. But yeah, for a while, like shooting ProRes like that, the file sizes get kind of big. So like I stopped really shooting 4K because I don't really want to buy that many more drives. And lately I started noticing that my computer was slowing down from editing ProRes, which I mean, it's a laptop. Like I know I need to get a good editing computer, but I'd have to run proxies for everything. Premiere was tripping up. Resolve was a little bit better, but still ProRes was still kind of a big file to work with and I didn't really want to encode it because you want to have the best untouched footage so then when you start editing it and then start exporting it, it doesn't look like crap as you export. It looks like the original file that you got out of camera. And yeah, I mentioned that I'm editing on Resolve. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, I'm really enjoying Resolve. Stay tuned. So let's talk about Blackmagic RAW. Now RAW is a very kind of trendy thing to throw around. And I didn't really believe the hype at first. Like I've heard of RAW from Red and Canon Light RAW, which I heard is a terrible codec. It is way too big for what it is. But Blackmagic RAW is incredible because Blackmagic Designs is able to give you this really good image, maintain so much more dynamic range out of it, it gives you a 12-bit file and it gives you full ISO and white balance control with their plugin in Premiere or natively in Resolve. And recently they came out with their Gen 5 color science, which that alone made me want to switch to B-Raw like completely. It looks so much better. Looking at just grading a Gen 4 color B-Raw clip versus a Gen 5, there's a lot of videos I want to talk about because there's some really important things that if you're shooting on these pocket cinema cameras or the Ursa, there's a lot you can take control of and it'll make everything so much easier. And your footage will look that much better. It'll look great. So with the Pocket 6K, unfortunately, there's no 1080 RAW, there's no 4K RAW, but you do get 6K RAW, you get a windowed 5.7K RAW, which gives you like a 0.01 times more crop, it's like a 1.7 crop, versus the 1.6 of the Super 35. I'll take it. Then there's some anamorphic modes with like 3K, which I never touched. Then there's the 6K anamorphic, which kind of seems interesting if you only want to shoot anamorphic. And my beloved 2.7K resolution. It gives you a 3.3 times crop, which gives you so much range out of your lenses. Like I love shooting on my 18 to 35. And like, if I want to get some more range, like if I don't want to get too close to people, especially during COVID, shooting in that codec allows you to get a lot closer because of that crop, and it still looks really good. Yeah, shooting at 2.7K basically makes my 18 to 35 a 60 to 115, which it gives you a whole spectrum of options in focal lengths, like equivalent wise. It's not really like throwing on a 60 to 115. So why would you want to shoot raw? Well, for me, the 12 bit versus the 10 bit is one of the main reasons why I'd want to shoot in raw. The smaller file sizes are honestly another main thing. Shooting at a smaller compression that is a smaller data rate than ProRes it makes your file sizes way smaller and like having 12 bit versus 10 bit in smaller file sizes and then having full ISO control, full white balance control and then now with DaVinci's new gen 5 color, all of those alone are enough to make me want to shoot raw. Yeah, it's a little bit slower to play it back on your computer but if you're just dropping it into your NLE like Premiere, Resolve. I don't know if Final Cut has support for that yet, so that might be a reason why you're not gonna shoot RAW, and like ProRes will cut really well in Final Cut because it's optimized well. Yeah, and the ISO and white balance, in case you buffed it and you shot at daylight, but you needed to shoot at tungsten or vice versa, you could change it without destroying your image. Like when you're shooting in ProRes or like some sort of 8-bit codec, if you try to change the temperature or white balance, like it completely ruins your image oftentimes because you can't push it it doesn't have that latitude, but with RAW, 
you could change the setting and it's as if you're changing it in camera because it, it stores the metadata in some weird way so that you can change it without ultimately destroying your image. So yeah, once you choose your B-RAW setting for shooting in 6K or 5.7K windowed, you choose your resolution and then now you have all these different options. You have constant bitrate and constant quality. For constant bitrate, you have different ratios. You have a three to one, five to one, eight to one, 12 to one. As of now, I think the Ursa 12K is getting like an 18 to one, which is stupid. It's insane. It's such a crazy small ratio that I hope it looks good because then your file sizes will be even smaller than what I'm shooting on here. So that's constant bitrate. We'll get into that later. And then there's constant quality, which is Q0 and Q5. Q0 is like the uncompressed, Q5 is a little more compressed, and there are more ratios. So when you're shooting a scene and it gets really complex, the bitrate will skyrocket to whatever it needs to maintain that quality. See, if you're shooting like a white wall, the bitrate will drop because you don't really need that information there. Like the data is pretty simple, but then if you're shooting like snow or confetti or like a lot of moving parts, like if you're shooting in the trees and like there's like shadows and highlights and everything moving around, your bitrate will skyrocket so then you can maintain all of that data and then maintain that quality. So yeah, what B-RAW setting do I use? Well, I used to shoot in five to one and eight to one and 12 to one constant bitrate, but I found that my file sizes were just way too big and like, I don't really need that. I'm mostly shooting for web or for social. If I'm shooting for a client that's like corporate or something, we honestly shoot in ProRes for most of the time. Honestly, 1080, just because you can shoot a whole interview without running out of space. For a while, I was shooting at 5.7K Q5, which Q5 is a really great codec. The codec ranges from data rates under 12 to 1, but goes past 8 to 1. So whatever your image needs, it'll fluctuate throughout all of that. So you can get a constant quality looking image. Everything will maintain that image. Like If you start shooting a complicated scene in constant bitrate, it won't look as good as the rest of the footage if it was more simple. So for me, I want to have something that looks the same all throughout. And Q5 helps you save storage if you're shooting a simple scene for a while. Like right now, I'm shooting in, well, I just started shooting 6K B-RAW. We'll get to that first. I started shooting 6K B-RAW because it's a little above 5.7K and it's primarily for just the normal Super 35 crop. Instead of a 1.7 times crop, it's a 1.6. So that's why I'm shooting 6K B-RAW but I have a terabyte drive and I've been filming for 13 minutes, shooting in Q5 at 400 ISO. And my, I have 485 minutes left. If I was shooting 6K B-RAW, like five to one, it'd only be like a hundred minutes. So because this is a pretty simple scene, I don't need a lot of data to be processing through so then I'm losing all of that information. But yeah, like I said, I've yet to try the anamorphic modes, like the 3K anamorphic, it's like a 3.8. Yeah, it's a, it's a 3.7 anamorphic, and then there's the 6K anamorphic. I think it's a good option, like if you just want to have that crop, if you're shooting mostly that aspect ratio, it's pretty cool to have that in camera, but I like having just the full 16 by nine, 17 by nine frame, and then adjusting if I want to have it be that anamorphic ratio, I can crop it to that and then adjust vertically. I like having that latitude, 16 to nine is pretty rad. So now the question, should I shoot B-RAW or ProRes? If you're mostly in Resolve and you love to color and you want the best looking image with the best color, I would shoot B-RAW. Being able to have that latitude of ISO and white balance and having the Gen 5 color and having it all natively inside of Resolve, even Premiere has a plugin for that. It works really well inside of Premiere. If you're editing in those two softwares and that's you, the person that wants the best quality, the best color and all that, I would shoot B-RAW. But if you're in Final Cut, I would shoot ProRes because ProRes is cut really well inside of Final Cut. If you're delivering really quickly or if you want to only shoot 1080 for web or if you're passing it off to another editor that isn't really going to do color, some would bake in a lot so then you can just pass it off to them. They do a couple simple sliders and then they're done. But I would shoot 1080 ProRes or 4K ProRes if I was passing it off to someone that I knew like only needed it for web streaming or something simple. But because I'm a filmmaker, videographer, whatever you want to call me. I want to have the best looking image throughout all of my stuff, have it just be top notch because I spent a lot of money on this camera and it looks great. It'd be kind of a bummer to not have the best looking footage. But yeah, if you're primarily shooting only 4K or 1080, the answer is there for you. Shoot ProRes or buy a Pocket 4K and shoot B-RAW on the Pocket 4K in 4K because it's the native sensor. I'll still shoot ProRes and 1080 and 4K 
especially if I'm on a trip where I'm not near a computer to back up my stuff, I'll shoot 1080 so I could save all those file sizes. Like when I was in Iceland, we were shooting only 1080p because, well, it was either 4K raw, <laughs> which would just burn through all the CFast cards on Niles the C200 or 1080 8-bit. And 1080 gave me like 1100 minutes on a terabyte drive and like we didn't have to offload, but it was nice to back up every night because we could. But it was nice not having to worry about burning through cards and just racking up all this data. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you've experimented with RAW. If you haven't yet, I want to encourage you to give it a try. It's not as scary as it seems, but if ProRes or just the MP4 codec or XAVC or whatever Canon has or Sony has, if that's working for you, then just keep sticking with that. But if you want something different, I highly recommend Blackmagic Raw because it is gorgeous. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Peace.